Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you. We bless your name tonight. Thank you for making it possible to come and land at your feet. Glorify your name, O God, for the last Bible study in the year 2015. Thank you for counting us worthy. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for guiding us. Thank you for helping us. Thank you for your presence in our life. Thank you for your presence in your church. We glorify your name. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Lord, as we have gathered together tonight, Lord, we pray that your presence will be with us in Jesus' name. Pray that your glory will come down in Jesus' name. We are praying that for people that are here to come, we pray that you bring them speedily in Jesus' name. We pray, O God Almighty, that you expand your word unto everyone tonight in Jesus' name. Lord, as we have come empty, Lord, we return with fullness of joy and blessings in Jesus' name. We pray, O God Almighty, that your word will bring the necessary transformation and blessings into our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Pray everyone that we hear you tonight will not remain the same in Jesus' name. Amen. Pray your name will be glorified. Amen. Thank you because you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brethren, let's go before the Lord and begin to bless the name of our God. Let's worship the name of our Lord. Let's thank him because he's good unto us. Oh, you are so good. Let's thank God for his great greatness. Let's thank God for his mercies. Thank God for his protection. Thank God for his love. The Bible says, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, then they had swallowed us up quick. When their wrath was kindled against us. Let's thank God because he has been with us. He has been by our side. He has been faithful unto us. He has been the loving Father. Let's bless the name of our God. Let's thank God for every member of this church. Let's thank God for everyone here tonight. Let's thank God for everyone that will be coming here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brethren, let's commit ourselves into the hand of God. Let's pray that tonight will be a great night. Let's pray that the Lord will visit us. The Lord will bless us tonight. Our life will never remain the same. Let's pray God will do great things in our life. God will do great things in our midst. God will give us the understanding of his word. Let's pray God will touch every life tonight. Pray God we give all the understanding of the word of God. That every beat of tonight's Bible study will be a blessing to everyone in Jesus' name.
Let's pray for those that are here to come. The devil will not be able to hinder them. The Lord will bring them. The Lord will bring all our invitee. Let's pray after tonight Bible study. No one will remain the same. Pray for yourself personally that God will touch you. Pray God will visit you. Pray the hand of God will reach unto you. God will touch you by his power. He touch you by his hand of miracle. And that God's word will work signs and wonders in your life. So that your life will not remain the same. And that tonight the Lord will do something new. The Lord will do something great. The Lord will do something wonderful. The name of the Lord will be glorified. And we possess all the blessings that come with the word of God Almighty. We possess all the blessings that are associated with the word of God. Say, God, visit me, O Lord. Touch me, O Lord. Let your word work wonders in my life. Let your word do miracles in my life. Let your word bring change into my life. Write your word on the table of my heart and make it indelible. Make it permanent. Lord, speak to me. Lord, speak to my heart. Speak to my life. And let your word do me good. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Almighty Father, we thank you. We bless your name. Lord, we commit ourselves into your hand once again. We pray you will take control tonight in Jesus' name that you will visit everyone in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's open our in book to in book 89 or the second page of our program book. In book 89 or the second page of our program book. HS 
give you the grace to follow. The grace of the Lord will be upon you. The mighty hand of the Lord will be upon you. You will neither look back or look front, but you will hold on to Jesus Christ, the master, the perfect, the finisher of the faith. It truly, it's difficult. In this kind of demised world, whereby the world is compromising, but you have decided to stay and do not compromise. You may be the only one on the road. You may be the only one on the journey. No matter what the case may be, Almighty God will uphold you. My dear sister, my dear brother in the Lord, do not look at human being. Many people have accused us in the past that a lot will have been done when talking about the pro television program, we are there. Talk about evangelism, we are there. Talk about the old day, the, the word of the truth, we are there. That why the church is not full. But I told them, if it is only me and my family, we are able to make it to the kingdom of God, we will continue to praise the name of the Lord. Why? The multitude does not matter. What matters is the faith in the Lord, Look at the other people that are supposed to be here. Look at the world. Look at the compromise. But if the grace of the Lord is upholding us, let us stay with the grace of the Lord. And we uphold us to the end. Call upon the name of the Lord. You will not look back. I will not look back. Almighty Father, the grace will be sufficient for us. The joy of the Lord will continue to be our strength. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. That by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, we are going to be moving forward. We will not go away. Look at Stephen. Look at many people that stoned him. Only him. Look at a lot of people that stoned him. But he was able to make it to the kingdom of God. Why are you afraid? What's that two thing that put fear into your mind? That people will talk that the church is not full. That people will talk that we are not many. That our leader we may be wondering that we are not okay in our life, spiritual life. Call upon the name of the Lord. God will justify us. And the grace of the Lord will be sufficient. I have decided to follow Jesus, I have decided to follow Jesus, I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back, no want me follow me, stay away follow. No one me follow me, stay away follow. I have this Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. That war behind me, that cross before me, that war behind me. The cross before me, the war behind me, the cross before me. No turning back, no turn. Call upon the name of the Lord, no turn will turn you back. Run the race patiently, with endurance, with faith, with hope. God will crown our efforts. God will wipe away our tears. By the power and the blood of Jesus, heaven, we will get there. And those people who are going to walk with us, without compromise sin, God will bring them in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray.
let's bring our title offering in jesus name we pray almighty father we glorify your name we thank you lord because of whom you are we thank you lord because of whom you are still continue to be father take all the glory in jesus name father as we are here by the power and the blood of jesus christ you will meet our need we will meet all things that we need spiritually to grow by the power and the blood of jesus christ all the garment of shame in the ministry in our practical in our practical life in our physical life almighty father you will tear away in the name of jesus christ almighty father i pray for every one of us that under this ministration today father you will speak to our hearts you will wipe away our tears you will wipe away you will take away shame that the, the garment of glory we will put upon every one of us in the name of jesus christ where is your god will not be our portion in the name of jesus christ thank you lord because you are the lord that answer prayer in jesus name we pray as we are putting our offering into the bag continue to call upon the name of the lord the most essential here is those people who are going to go along this way with us let's call upon the name of the lord that god will bring them the grace of the lord will be sufficient the mighty hand of the lord will be sufficient call upon the name of the lord that even you you will not tired and god will lead you in the way in jesus name we pray in jesus name we pray our mighty father we thank you lord we glorify your name for all what you have done we praise your name we thank by the power and the blood of jesus Christ, your mighty hand will continue to be upon us in this name and your all mighty hand will uphold us thank you lord because you are the lord and answer prayer in jesus name we pray praise the lord let us be seated i welcome everyone first to today the last bible study of the year and then i will not but commend every one of us for all what we have done the journey has not been easy for every one of us the family especially lord that we not keep mentioning if people will say i'm praising you i know if you are in the circle of the world people will praise you more than this my family and neighbor family you have sacrificed a lot and i pray that by the power and the blood of jesus christ god will reward every one of us in jesus name many times we have divided we have decided to close our ear to what what the world is saying and we have decided that no matter what the case may be we are going to to carry the cross I pray by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. We will not run the race in vain in Jesus' name. And by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. All the garment, we are thinking it is a shame. We are thinking we cannot bear. We are thinking how far, how long we are going in this journey. God will take them away in the name of Jesus Christ. And then um, it's my belief that I cannot be speaking to everyone of us at except jesus himself does it is my belief that by the power and the blood of jesus christ god will speak to every one of you at in the name of jesus christ and then confession from almighty god god will continue to keep every one of you in jesus name i've read a lot of things for us about those people who write the song our own song too is coming and I pray by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. The kingdom of God will be our portion in the name of Jesus Christ. We will not run the, the, the race in vain. I thank you. I appreciate you as we are doing the last Bible study of the year. Praise the Lord. Um, there's a lot to say, but I think the New Year testimony we are going to share every one of them in Jesus' name. I, because of those people who will be watching all that, those people who are praying for, that they should come and settle down in Charlotte Free. Our Sunday service always come up between 9 and 11 30. And then before I forget, I, there's a number I need to give to us again. The brother is in the Broadway. It's about 50 minutes to this place. 
So let us continue to challenge him. So, and then, then our Sunday service always our Sunday service start between nine and eleven thirty. Except we listen to pastor message, and our Monday Bible study always come up within seven and then within eight thirty and nine. God will continue to help us in Jesus' name. Do not forget our Thursday prayer meeting, especially I think that's the last prayer meeting of the year. Let us be PVA and God will help us in Jesus' name. Uh, during the, our New Year service, please write all your prayer requests. Write on a sheet of paper and bring it to the Lord. I remember last year, God answered our prayer. And then I, uh, I've been sharing the testimony. And God is going to do the same thing wonderful today in Jesus' name. Another mistake I've done is that we supposed to have, either that we are going to do the local one or something. We're supposed to have done the invitation. But please bear with me. Uh, we send it to our through the Facebook. Whatever we can print, let us print it. And then if I'm able to print something out, I will make sure that we get it. And then. The most important one now, program for us now, is watch night service. And God is going to help us. The grace of the Lord will be with us in Jesus' name. Because of our time, we shall go to our Bible reading, Genesis chapter 3. The book of Genesis chapter 3. Chapter 3. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. 
Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Unto Adam also, and to his wife, did the Lord God make coats of skins, and clothed them. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand, and take also of the tree of life, and eat, and live forever, therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man. And he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. May God bless his word in our heart in Jesus' name. We shall listen to choir song.
Let's pray together. Our Father, we thank you because of what you are going to do. We're asking, oh Lord, to touch everyone and give us the grace to be doers of the word in Jesus' name. And we pray that all who are gathered with us to study today, you grant us illumination and inspiration. So that, Lord, you grant us the key of understanding. We'll study and apply the word to our lives in Jesus' name. And we pray that the study of the word will make us better believers in the kingdom of God. And those who are yet to know you, open their hearts, Lord, to your word, that your salvation, your grace, your redemption will come to everyone. Once again, Lord, we pray, lead us by your spirit and guide us into the truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Yes. And everybody said, yes. Thank you very much. In the epistle of Paul the Apostle to first to the Thessalonians, the first epistle. I'm reading to you from First Thessalonians chapter 3, from verse 1 all through to verse 5. It says, Wherefore, when we could no longer forbear, we thought it good to be left at Athens alone. And St. Timotheus, meaning Timothy, a brother, and minister of God, and a fellow liberal in the gospel of Christ to establish you and to comfort you concerning your faith, that no man should be moved by these afflictions. For yourselves know that we are appointed thereunto, for verily when we were with you, we told you before that we should suffer tribulation, even as it came to pass, and ye you know. Verse 5, for this cause, when I could no longer forbear, I sent to you know your faith, lest by some means the tempter attempted you, and a labor be in vain. We're looking at the pastor's heart as we look at these verses of scripture. These Thessalonians have come to know the Lord in redeeming grace. The Lord had sent Timothy and Silas and Paul unto Thessalonians and they preached the word and many of them became believers. But as they became believers, trouble came because of persecution. We're looking at Acts chapter 17. Reading from verse 1, from the very beginning, when these people accepted the Lord, received the gospel, were born again, were turned around, persecution arose. Look at it from Exodus 17, verse 1. Now, when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where there was the synagogue of the Jews. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them. And three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures, opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ. He spoke to them about Jesus, Jesus Christ who came to die for our sins, Jesus Christ who came to take all our infirmities, all our iniquities, all our problems, it came to take everything away on the cross of Calvary. And the only way that will be done, that that salvation will be ours. The only way that eternal life will be ours. And the only way that goodness of the Lord coming out of heaven through Calvary and through the cross of Christ will come unto us is to turn away from sin and to repent of our sins and then to call upon the Lord and believe that he died for us on the cross of Calvary. And then we're saved. And the Bible says that if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. And that you believe he died in particular for you. Rest of your justification. It says you will be saved. For what the heart man believes unto righteousness. And what the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And so he preached Jesus Christ to them. The only savior. The only redeemer. The only one that can take their sins away. And as they preached that, and they were told in verse 4, and some of them believed, and they consulted with Paul and Silas, and of the devout Greeks, and great, a great multitude, and of the chief women, not a few. Many people came to know the Lord. Their lives were changed. Their lives were transformed. 
those who were sinful before, the Lord forgave them and transformed their lives, and everything came anew. Because the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, tell me the rest. It's a new creature, old things have passed away, old lifestyle passed away, old habits passed away, old sinful character passed away, and behold, all things have become new. That's exactly what happened to them, but immediately, the Jews that did not believe, they restored persecution. They were not happy that these people left their sins, they left the gangs, they left all the evil ways of the past, and they came to know the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Look at verse 5. But the Jews would believe not, moved with envy, and it took unto them certain lewd fellows of the baser sort, and gathered the company and set all the city on an uproar, and assaulted, assaulted the house of Jason and sought to bring them out to the people. And that's the reason why the people then quickly sent Paul, the apostle, with Timothy and Silas, and sent them out of Thessalonica so that the trouble will not overtake them. But please remember, the Thessalonians were still left behind. That's their house, that's their place, that's their city. And they had nowhere to run to. But they were new converts. They now became believers. And it is out of this that Paul the Apostle became concerned for them. Come back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 1. Paul and Silas and Timotheus unto the church of the Thessalonians, which is in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Write him back to them. After they had been driven out because of the persecution, he wrote back to them, he said, what gives me joy, what gives me satisfaction, and what gives me pleasure is the fact that you remain in God and you remain in Christ. And because you remain in Christ, you remain in God, I'm so happy concerning you. Then he reminded them how they received the gospel and the kind of persecution and tribulation and trouble and the trauma that came upon them after they received the gospel. Look at verse 5, chapter 1. For our gospel came not unto you in what only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance as she know what manner of men we were among you for your sakes. And ye became followers of us in verse 6 and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. The affliction there is referring to the persecution that they experienced immediately. They came to know the Lord. And since that time, Paul the Apostle, he wanted to go back to them because he was concerned about them like a mother is concerned over children, like a father is concerned over his own children. It's like a mother that has been taken away from these children and he wanted, he was anxious to know about the state and the security of his children, the Thessalonian believers. It's like a father that was just taken away from the sheep where the people were sailing and there was a stormy sea there and then the father not concerned about those children wanting to have reliable information concerning them. Are they protected? Are they provided for? That's the reason why he wanted to go to them once and again. But he was hindered. Look at chapter 2 verse 18. Wherefore we would have come unto you. Well, remember your predicament, your persecution. Well, remember the situation in which you find yourself. And we would have come back to you once and again. Even I, Paul, but Satan hindered us. It's because of this that now Paul the Apostle became concerned. And he said, we need to check up on these people. But the people were going to persecute, even almost kill if they could. They were going to destroy the life and the ministry of Paul the Apostle. And he said, what shall we do? I'm trying to go back to Thessalonica, and it's impossible. I'm trying to visit them again, it's impossible. I'm trying to strengthen them and comfort them and be with them. But it's impossible. What shall we do? Look at chapter 3, now verse 1. Wherefore, when we could no longer forbear, we sought each good to be led at Athens alone. And we said, we're going to do something. We're going to send a representative. 
a dependable representative, a trustworthy representative, a real competent, capable representative that will be able to do what Paul the Apostle, what he would have done. Look at verse 5. He says, for this cause, when I could no longer forbear. Did you notice that in verse 1? When we could no longer forbear. That's verse 1. Now in verse 5 again, for this cause, when I could no longer forbear. That is, I kept waiting that the doors will open again. I kept waiting that the persecution will die down. I kept waiting that I'll be able to go back there again. And I've not been able to. And he said, now I am tired of waiting. I must get there. If I cannot get there, somebody else must get there to help the people. That's why he said in verse 5, For this cause, when I could no longer forbear, I sent to know your faith, lest by some means the tempter have tempted you and our neighbor be in vain. He wanted to know about just one thing, about their faith. In fact, as we look at this uh, chapter 3, it mentions your faith five times. Look at verse 2. What concerns him? Were they standing in the faith? Were they remaining in the faith? Were they defending the faith? Were they upholding the faith? Were they living by the faith of the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us? Were they living by faith, not in the flesh? That's what he wanted to know. And that is why he sent Timothy unto them. Look at verse 2. So looking for those words, your faith. It says, and we sent Timothy, our brother and minister of God, and our fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ to establish you and to comfort you. Concerning what? Concerning your faith. Look at uh, the next verse there. Look at verse 5. In verse 5 it says, For this cause, when I could no longer forbear, I sent to know your faith. Lest some tempter have tempted you by some means, and then I may but be in vain. Look at verse 6 there. For now, when Timotheus came from you unto us, and he brought us good tidings of your faith and charity, the concern he had was that they still kept the saving faith. They still kept the sustaining faith. And they still kept the sanctifying faith. And they still kept the faith that will make them remain attached to the Lord and separated from the world. And he said, Timothy came back and he told us about your faith and that alone. Knowing that you are still standing and you are standing by faith, you are remaining in the faith, that gave us the joy that our labor has not been in vain. Look at verse 7 there. Therefore, brethren, we were comforted over you in all our affliction and distress by your faith. That's the important thing he wanted to know about. Look at verse 10, night and day, praying exceedingly that we might see your face and we might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. Five times in a single chapter. Paul the Apostle thinking about the people, talking about the people, and then getting back to them. And then he's telling them, your faith is what's important. You came to the Lord by faith, and you're going to remain in the Lord by faith. The just shall lay by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. And he wanted to find out, what is still standing? What is still remaining? What is sustained? And what is living by that faith of the Son of God? And when he found that their faith was still remaining steadfast, he was so happy. And then he wrote to them, that's why I said in chapter 1, look at chapter 1 verse 3. Remembering without ceasing your work of faith. He said, now that Timothy came back and gave us information about your faith, and will remember the oppression of faith in your life, and standing by faith in your life. He said, I remember that all the time, and I'm praying for you that that faith will continue. For our own understanding, why was he so concerned about the faith? And he mentioned that over and over, and he said, all I'm concerned about, I'm concerned about your faith. Why? Because, look at this in the Word of God, it is by faith that we are saved and justified. If anybody ever got saved, anybody ever got born again, it is by faith. In Romans chapter 3, Romans chapter 3, I'm reading there from verse 28. Romans chapter 3, verse 28. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. 
That's why he wanted to know, are they still justified? Are they still in the kingdom of God? Are they still born again? Are they still having that forgiveness and freedom from sin that I declared unto them? And he said, I'm happy that you are still keeping that you are saved and justified by faith. Number two, we're purified and sanctified by faith. That's why it's so important. You know, the Bible says, without holiness, no man shall say the Lord. That holiness, sanctification, purity comes by faith. And except they were standing in faith, they'll not be able to see the Lord of glory on the final day. That's why he said, I'm concerned about your faith. I sent Timothy to you and I want to find out, are you still standing? Look at Acts of the Apostles. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 15, verse 9. Sanctified by faith, purified by faith. Acts chapter 15, verse 9. And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. If you find anybody that remains impure, it's because he doesn't have faith. If you find anybody that remains unholy, unrighteous, unsanctified, it's a lack of faith. And without faith, you know, the Bible says, without faith, we cannot please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Faith is indispensable. Faith is very important. If you are going to get sanctified, it is by faith. Acts chapter 26. And I'm reading from verse 18. Acts chapter 26, verse 18. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by what? By faith. Sanctified by faith. And if you have faith, you are going to delight in sanctification, you are going to rejoice in sanctification, and you are going to possess that sanctification to be a practical daily experience in your life. Not only that, number three, we are preserved and kept by faith. We start the race by faith, we continue by faith, we are preserved in the grace of God by faith. First Peter chapter 1 verse 5. First Peter chapter 1 verse 5, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. It says the way we're preserved, the way we're kept in the kingdom, so that we're not falling and rising, going out and coming in, we remain steady and steadfast in the kingdom of God is by faith. That's why Paul, the apostle, said, all I'm concerned about Thessalonians, all I want to watch over Thessalonians, all I want Timothy to find out when he gets to you, I want him to find out about your faith. Because it's by faith you are saved. It's by faith you are justified. It's by faith you are purified. It's by faith you are sanctified. And it is by faith you are kept. It's by faith you are preserved. Number four, we overcome Satan by faith faith. We overcome Satan by faith. When it comes with all his trials, all his trouble, all his wars, all his craftiness, we overcome all those craftiness and wars of the enemy by faith. Ephesians chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 16. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith, whereby when we, we shall be able to quench all the fairy darts of the wicked, that is, of the devil, of Satan. That means then if the people did not have faith, all those idolaters in Tesnaika would have been able to overcome them. All those occultic people in Tesnaika, they would have been able to overcome them. Don't you remember that Tesnaika was filled with idolatry? In fact, it says, you turn to God from idols, dead idols. And the other people that still remain unconverted, they were idolatrous people, occultic people. And it is by this faith that these Thessalonian believers were able to overcome. And if you're living in any community where there's idolatry, where there's occultism, all you need is faith. And then you'll be able to stand by faith. That's why Paul the Apostle was checking up how about your faith. And that's why we need to be checking up from you how about your faith. The faith through which we are saved. The faith through which we are sanctified. And the faith through which we are preserved and kept. And the faith through which we conquer Satan. Not only that, we even conquer the world by that faith. First John chapter 5. First John chapter 5. And I'm reading from verse 3 and from verse 4. 
First John chapter 5, verse 3, verse 4. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. That's verse 3. And his commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world. Even what? Even our faith. You know, all those things, pollutions of the world, the pornography of the world, and all these perversions of the world, if you're going to be able to overcome, because the world is all around you, all around you in your community, all around you in the place where you live, and you hear the noise, and you hear all the evils, and they're pumping out that dirty scene every time. If it's not going to splash on you and remain on you, and you're going to overcome every pollution, perversion coming, to, coming from the world, you're going to be able to maintain your faith. And there's so much perversion in this America. And there's so, so much pollution in the society. And Paul, the apostle, wanted to know, were they overcoming? Overcoming Satan? Overcoming temptation? Overcoming the tempter? Overcoming the world? Overcoming all those things? Go and check out Timothy about their faith. And if the faith is so important, you should be checking up to you about your own faith. Are you checking up? That are you overcoming daily by the face of the Son of God? Are you living daily in victory, victory over sin, victory over evil by the faith that has been planted in you when you are born again? As Paul the Apostle told Timothy to check up on their faith, you should be checking up to you on your faith. It's by faith that was turned. Winds will blow and dust will be thrown at all, but it is by that faith we keep standing every time. We're looking at Second Corinthians chapter one, verse twenty-four. Second Corinthians chapter one. I read there from verse twenty-four, standing by faith. It says in verse twenty-four, "Not for that we have dominion over your faith, but a help us of your joy, for by faith we stand." By faith, we stand. The devil will like to push you down. Persecutors will like to push you down. Detractors will like to trample over you. And the world will like to drag you down. But it's by faith that we stand. And all those things were beating against the Christian lives of the Thessalonians. And Paul the Apostle knew that if they were going to stand, there was only one way they were going to stand. And he said, Timothy, go and check up. Check up about their faith. And then it's by that faith we'll walk by faith. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. Second Corinthians 5, verse 7. For we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith as we walk in the law of God in the way of in this narrow path, narrow way that leads to heaven. The only way we can walk straight in that straight and narrow way is to have faith, faith in the Lord. That we know that now we are saved by faith and that faith is sustained and is keeping us alive in the Lord. Walking by faith, we live by faith. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. In Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You always remember that they said, the Lord bore all my sins, all my trauma, all my trouble, all my sorrow, everything evil. The devil wanted to stop my journey, but Jesus Christ paid it all. And he rejoiced in that and believed in that every day. And now he says, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And he wanted to check out whether the Thessalonians were having the same victory as he was having. In fact, any of the promises of God that the Lord gives us, promise for salvation, promise for sanctification, promise for healing, promise for deliverance, promise for riches, promise for wealth, promise for being stable in the Lord and promise of having all the good things of life and promise that everything concerning you concerning us will be perfected and promise that we'll get to heaven all those promises we inherit by faith the promises are there and you are there and as a promise to match every problem of your life and whatever the mountain whatever the storm and whatever the heartache and whatever the headache in your life the promise of God is there to match every problem and if you're going to overcome every problem it is by faith we carry the promises by faith that's why Paul the apostle was concerned 
and the, the apostle was saying, all the provisions are yours, all the promises are yours, all the preservation, protection, everything is yours, but there's one thing I want Timothy to check up when he gets to you, because without the arms of faith, and without the faith to be able to get all those things, you'll not be able to get them. We inherit the promises of God by faith. Timothy, go and check up how about their faith. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 12. Hebrews chapter 6, we're reading from verse 12. It says that ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Through faith and patience inherit the promises. Faith is indispensable in pleasing God. And faith is indispensable in living for Christ. Faith is indispensable in living with Him in all eternity. That's why Paul was so anxious to know that these believers were still keeping the faith and were standing to the test. And the same thing with you. As those people stood, they were standing in Jesus' name. We're not going to look at the study in detail. I'm going to divide the study to three parts. Number one, the purposeful follow-up by a tender, prayerful soul. Well, purposeful follow-up. Now you understand, I read it to you already, that in Acts of the Apostles chapter 17, Paul the Apostle with Timothy and Silas, that is Silvanus, they have gone to Thessalonica. And he preached the word unto them. And many of them believed and they gave their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. And after that, persecution arose. Now there was follow up. That's why after we've done all this evangelism that we're doing, after we've contacted people and were knocked on doors, we preached the gospel to many people, and he said he came to the Lord. We need to follow up on them, integrate them with the church, so that they'll begin, they'll continue to grow in their newfound faith and the joy of salvation that came unto them. That's why you have point number one, purposeful follow up by tender prayer for soul winner. Number two, persecuted fellowship of, te of teachable prophet purified saints. That is, these uh, people, they were teachable. Thank God they received the teaching. Their hearts were sought and subdued. And everything the Lord was teaching them through the Apostle Paul, they accepted everything and were purified too. But persecution came upon their fellowship. And Paul, the Apostle, wanted to encourage them and say, don't mind the persecution I told you before, that whosoever, everyone that will live godly will suffer persecution. Therefore, don't allow that to discourage you. Continue. And then number three, paternal feeling, parental feeling, pastoral feeling for tempted, persecuted sons. We're looking at number one. Let's come back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. I'm reading from verses 1 and 2. Wherefore, when we could no longer forbear, we thought it good to be left at Athens alone. You know what Paul the Apostle is saying here? He's saying, Paul, Silas, Timothy, they were together. And they loved one another. And they were ministering together. And then they came to Athens. And Athens was a Greek city. And in Athens, that's the place where Paul the Apostle said, I beheld and saw your altars that you say to the unknown God. It was a place of trouble, a, a dangerous place, a place of insecurity. And actually, Paul the Apostle needed Silas to be with him, he needed Timothy to be with him. It wasn't a place they should stay alone. But all the time they were together in Athens, they were saying that these Thessalonians were not hearing about them. And there was no postal, uh, postage uh, possibility then. There was no radio then. There was no telephone then. And there was no way they could contact them. And he said, somebody must have to go. And he was saying, but Paul, if we any of us will leave, you'll be alone here. There'll be nobody with you. And the security here is very doubtful. How are we going to leave you here because of the situation here? Look at that in Acts of the Apostles chapter 17. Acts of the Apostles chapter 17, and then you will see what Paul, said, what Paul the Apostle was talking about, the insecurity that was there, and the problem that was there. And he said, I'm sending this Timothy, even though I'll be left alone in this insecure place. That's how much he loved them. That's how much you ought to love the newcomers. That's how much you ought to love the people that have just come to know the Lord. That even if he places you in a position, situation of insecurity, you'll still be able to reach out unto those newcomers and bring them to the fellowship of the people of God. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17, verse 15. 
then they con they, then they that and they that conducted Paul brought him to unto Athens and receiving a commandment unto Silas and Timotheus for to come to him with all speed they departed but now while Paul waited for them at Athens his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly giving to idolatry you understand that Athens was a place of idolatry, of occultism, of a real, terrible, dangerous, satanic activities. Therefore, disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons, and in the market daily with them that met with him. Then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him, and some said, what will this babbler say? That's how they looked at him in Athens. He was a barbarian. He was a babbler. He was a person that didn't know what he was doing. Can you imagine in such a place where there was no security? In such a place where he needed all the companionship of Silas and Timothy. There's, he still said, I'm interested in Thessalonica. These Thessalonians, I don't know whether they're still keeping the faith or not. My own physical security, don't mind, don't uh, mention that. My own physical protection, don't mind all that. All I'm concerned about is the protection and the preservation and the faith of these Thessalonians. And then when he was left alone, they said, he is a babbler. They said, what will this babbler say? Other some, he seemed to be a set up forth of strange gods. They were even talking about him as if yeah, he is an idol worshiper himself because he's talking about something they didn't understand. He preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. Look at verse 19. And they took him and they brought him unto Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speakest is, for thou bringest a certain strange things to our ears we would know therefore what these things mean for all the Athenians and the strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing then Paul stood in the midst of mass hill and said ye men of Athens I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious that's the situation in which he was left alone he sent Timothy, he sent Timothy, he said, Timothy, I know I need you here. I know that your companionship, your fellowship is very important to me here because all these people around me, they are dangerous people, idolatrous people, superstitious people, occultic people, but I'd rather be left alone in danger and insecurity rather than leave those Thessalonians to allow their faith to be wasted. And let's look at verse 23. It says, For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, and said, Him declare I unto you. Let's come back to first Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 1. Now you understand the love he had for them. That he'd rather be in danger, rather give up his liberty, his protection, his security, than to leave those Thessalonians in danger of losing their faith. Chapter 3, verse 1, 1 Thessalonians, wherefore, when we could no longer forbear, we thought it good to be led at Athens alone, alone, and St. Timotheus, our brother, and minister of God, a fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ to establish you and to comfort you concerning your faith. He said, I'm concerned about you. And now, who did he send? He sent this uh, young minister, this young man, this young companion, and he sent this Timothy. What do we know about Timothy? Look at that verse 2. It says, Timothy, number one, our brother. That means he was really born again. Paul, the apostle, didn't have any, any doubt at all that this man was born again. If you're going to send somebody to go and follow up, make sure they are born again. You want to send him on a missionary trip, make sure he's born again. You want to send him to go and encourage other people, lift up other people, strengthen other people, comfort other people. You want to send him to go and establish a church, a new church, a new church of new converts. Number one, must make sure that the person is like Timothy, that he is our brother, he is born again. Number two, and minister of God. 
this man Timothy was a minister of God he actually he knew the Lord and he had the call of God upon his life and was going to minister the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and then our fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ uh, that, that, that then informs us the kind of people that you are going to make to pastor a new church or to lead a new house fellowship or to be able to be a zona leader in a new zone or to be able to help us in any new satellite church we don't just pick anybody and say well we need somebody there in that satellite church go and do that for us or maybe there's vacancy in any country in africa or beyond africa and they say send us a missionary send us a missionary we don't just pick somebody somebody here who is not dependable who is not trustworthy who we don't even know about his life but somebody who has been a worker already, a preacher already, a pastor already, a fervent person already, a prayerful person already, a dependable, trustworthy person already, like Timothy, because we are told, a fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ, and then is to establish you and to comfort you concerning your faith. We know something more about this Timothy. Look at the Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. We're thinking about the people were sent out. You know, some, some people, they say, you know, you're too useful over here at the headquarters. We cannot send you out. That's wrong. That's wrong. Paul, the apostle, needed Timothy to be with him in Athens. And, you know, there are some people that to think that, you know, the GS uh, needs uh, all these great ministers, wonderful ministers, dependable ministers, because uh, how can he carry the load alone? You are right. How can I carry it alone? It, for his security, for his protection, for his preservation, and for hell. He needs all these other people. Even those other people, it is like they are perishing. Why don't just allow them to perish if they are going to perish? But you need all these people here around you. The Bible says no. The Spirit of God says no. Paul the Apostle says no. That we will rather remain short start at the headquarters over here where we are. We will rather be exposed to all the kind of insecurity in Athens rather than leave Thessalonica without a pastor or leave that new country, new fellowship, a new church without a pastor. That's why Paul the Apostle said, I'm going to find somebody capable, somebody competent, somebody committed, somebody commissioned. I'm going to send such a person unto them. Look at Philippians chapter 2. I'm reading there from verse 19. Philippians chapter 2 verse 19. It says, but I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy shortly unto you, that I also may be of good comfort when I know your state. Anytime Paul the Apostle wanted to know the stage of the people, the situation of the people, the standing of the people, he finds a person like Timothy, dependable, trustworthy, and really spiritual. He says in verse 24, I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your stage, for all seek their own. He says all the other people are not sanctified, they are selfish. All the other people are not sanctified and self-centered. All the other people are not dependable because they only think about themselves. He said, they only seek their own, not the things which belong to Jesus Christ. But you know him, Timothy, the proof of him, that as a son with the Father, he has served with me in the gospel. Verse 23, him, Timothy, therefore, I hope to send presently so soon as I shall see how it will go with me. That's Timothy. I pray you will be like that. I said you will be like that. And this Timothy was a person that you know Paul the apostle wrote to later. And see what he wrote to him in 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 2. And the things which thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. He said, Timothy, I'm sending you out. You know what you're going to do? The same way I trained you, and the same way I developed you, and the same way I poured my life, my resources into you. And now you're spiritual, and you know the doctrine, you know the teaching, you know the lifestyle, you know the way you ought to live. The same thing you are going to find faithful men who shall be able to teach others also, and you're going to pass that on to them. You're going to train other people to do what you have been trained to do. Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 5. Chapter 4 verse 5 of watch thou in all things. Said Timothy, watch in all things and do affliction. Do the work of an evangelist. He said, as you go there. Yes, we thank God that some of them are converted already. There will be those who are not born again. Any country you are sent to, they are unbelievers there too. 
Any fellowship you are sent to, there will be unbelievers there too. Any else fellowship you are sent to, there might be unbelievers there too. And any new satellite church you are sent to, there will be believers like Thessalonians. There will be unbelievers there too. Therefore, you'll do the work of an evangelist, of a soul winner. You'll preach the gospel so that those who are not saved in that fellowship, in that community, they will be saved as well. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. We're looking at First Timothy chapter 1 verse 3. Looking at the ministry of this Timothy. He wasn't an idle person and yet Paul the Apostle said, Timothy, you know what? I need you in another place. I need you in Thessalonica so that you'll go to strengthen the faith of the people, establish them and comfort them. First Timothy chapter 1 verse 3. As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus when I went into Macedonia that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine that was timothy and this timothy was doing the work of god just like paul the apostle we're looking at first corinthians chapter 16 first corinthians chapter 16 we're looking at verse 10 first corinthians chapter 16 verse 10 now if timothy come see that he may be with you without fear for he timothy walketh the work of the lord as i also you. you see the confidence that this Paul the Apostle had in this young man, Timothy. And you must be a person like that, that we have confidence in, for you also to be able to send you out. There are sometimes some people, they say, hey, Pastor, Pastor, I've been in the church for so many years now, and uh, you know, I want to be a missionary, I want to be a pastor, I want to be this and that. That's a good desire. For a person to desire the office of, of a bishop, that's a good thing. But there are qualifications, and you can see this in the life and the ministry of Timothy. He made himself capable and qualified, and therefore was commanded and commissioned. And when the uh, apostle said, go here, immediately he rose and he went. He wasn't dilly-dallying, he wasn't delaying, he wasn't dragging his feet, he wasn't saying, I'm going to drag my feet, I'll wait a little, so that the members of the church, they'll go and talk to the pastor and say, hey, pastor, what are you doing? Are you going to send Timothy out? Don't you know that you need Timothy with you in Athens? Are you going to send a person like this out? You know, there are some people, when the Lord calls them through the pastor, through their leader, and he says, this is the place to go, they'll be dragging their feet, they'll be waiting, they'll be picking this and dropping it, and picking this and dropping it. All they're doing is, they're trying to, you know, buy time, and they're trying to wait, you know, one week and one month and three months are there, and they have not gone, and you're saying, what are you doing? I'm still preparing. The thing that, you know, sometimes uh, members of the church will come to talk to the pastor and say, Pastor, why don't you leave this person alone? Because we need him here, we need him here, we need him here. And find another person who is useless. Find another person who is worthless, who cannot do anything good at the headquarters. Those are the people you have to send out. But Paul, the apostle, said, no, this is the person, capable person, committed person, competent person. A person that has the Spirit of God upon him and is doing the work of God as well as I am doing it. That's the person to send out and thank God. Timothy did not waste time. You will not waste time. Let me come back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. What was he to do when he got there? Look at the latter part of verse 2. Chapter 3 verse 2. It says to establish you and to comfort you concerning your faith. To establish you and to comfort you concerning your faith. That's what we have to do. How do we do that? Acts of the Apostles chapter 16. Acts of the Apostles chapter 16. I'm reading there from verse 4 and verse 5. How do you establish the new converts? How do you establish a new church? How do you establish a new missionary field where you have just been sent? Acts of the Apostles chapter 16 verses 4 and 5. And as they went through the cities... They delivered them the decrees for to keep that were ordained of the apostles and elders which were at Jerusalem. Jerusalem was the headquarters church. And then the doctrine coming out of the headquarters, the lifestyle coming out of the headquarters, the process and the manner of worship coming out of the headquarters, and all the whole administration of the church coming out of the headquarters from Jerusalem, they delivered unto these people. Look at the result in verse 5. And so were the churches established in the faith and increased in number daily. That's what the Lord wants us to do so that 
we are now establishing the people not with strange doctrine but with the doctrines of the word of god hebrews chapter 13 i'm reading from verse 8 and verse 9 hebrews chapter 13 verse 8 and verse 9 jesus christ the same yesterday and today and forever when we send timothy's out and they are to establish the churches and they are to establish the mission field they are to establish uh, the places where they have gone they are not people that will say well all this old doctrine of repentance of salvation of sanctification holy ghost baptism speaking in tongues and one man one wife old thing that we're repeating every time and they want to bring a new ideology a new philosophy a new doctrine a strange doctrine it says no that jesus christ is the same yesterday and today and forever then in verse 9 it says be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines for it is a good thing that they had been established with grace established with grace not with means which have not profited them that have of, that have been occupied there and come back to first Thessalonians chapter 3 first Thessalonians chapter 3 we're looking at that latter part of verse 2 it says to establish you and to comfort you and to comfort you that was the second thing that Timothy was to do when he got to Thessalonica why because a lot of things were happening in Thessalonica to start with some people had died in Thessalonica and then not only that, they were facing persecution. Not only that, there was the pressure of the Jewish people, Jewish religion upon them. And there were, some of them were getting confused. Some of them were getting under pressure. Some of them were being, the persecution was dragging them out. And, Paul, and this, uh, Timothy was to comfort them. Look at it now in First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse, verse 18. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words words concerning the rapture words concerning the second coming of the lord words concerning the protection the preservation of the people of god they were to be comforted and that is the word that comforts us and Timothy was to take that word unto them first corinthians chapter 14 first corinthians chapter 14 and i'm reading there from verse 31 first corinthians 14 verse 31 how are they to be comforted it says for ye may all prophesy proclaim preach declare the word the will of the lord one by one that all may learn and all may be comforted what they learn to bring comfort unto them the comfort of the world the comfort of the scriptures as timothy got there he will look at their situation and as he looked at their situation he will bring the word of god unto them he'll say hey don't you worry about that it happened to so and so in bible days like that it happened to such and such in bible days like that and they came out of it and with the word he'll bring comfort unto them romans chapter 15 verse 4 romans chapter 15 we're looking at verse 4 for whatsoever things were reaching aforetime, time they were written for our learning that through the that we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope timothy was to go to test Nikon, and when he got there he was to bring the scriptures unto them and through that scripture they'll have hope and be comforted we're coming to point number two now persecuted fellowship of teachable purified saints the persecuted fellowship of teachable persecuted saints in first thessalonians chapter 3 first thessalonians chapter 3 i'm reading from verses 3 and 4 that no man should be moved by these afflictions for yourselves know that we are appointed thereunto and what paul the apostle was telling them is it's very easy for somebody to get discouraged for somebody to be moved what is being moved that is when you are being in a position uh, for example and then the wind is blowing and the storm is raging and you allow the wind to blow you down and then to move you away from where you are then you go to another place you are in the position of you are in the place and position of a believer persecution comes storm comes and all the storm raging moves you from being a believer to being a backslider and paul the apostles i'm concerned i'm concerned that you are being a believer when i knew you and the things that are happening i don't want those afflictions to move you from the place the position of a believer to that of a backslider look at that verse 3 again that no man should be moved 
by these afflictions for yourselves know that we are appointed there unto him verse 4 for verily when we were with you we told you before that we should suffer tribulation even as it is it came to pass and ye know well he told them why did he tell them because jesus christ told his own disciples every pastor is to tell all the people and every leader of the church is to tell all the followers that when you come to the lord jesus christ persecutions will definitely arise and when you are told that keep that in your heart so that when it comes it will not surprise you when it comes it will not jolt you when it comes it will not blow you down and move you and get you discouraged the lord said i told you before persecution is coming and when it comes that's what the lord spoke about that's what the holy spirit has been reminding us that persecution is coming now it has come and it is not necessary for you to be moved just because there's persecution. Look at John chapter 15. John chapter 15, reading from verse 18. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you are the world, the world will love its own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. That's the reason the persecution is coming and you are not going to allow that to move you it will not move you in jesus name but that persecution will strengthen your spiritual muscle and you go stronger and stronger every day in jesus name by looking at the risk why were they persecuted jesus said you are being persecuted because i've chosen you out of the world because you are not of the world because you are not part of them you know that's why they persecute you they're stealing. You don't want to steal office materials with them. They are persecuted. They're changing the receipts and they're giving out wrong receipts. Because you are not of the world, you are not of them, they will persecute you. They're committing immorality and then they're trying to push a one a, a spoiled lady on you. They have spoiled her already here and there. They are pushing that to you. They say, marry this one. And say, no, I'm sorry, I don't want to marry a non-believer. They will persecute you because you don't want to join them in their evil. Or it is that they're trying to get into a covenant of evil. And then they say, hey, come on, join this. Because everybody is there already. Pay your due and come and register and be part of Say, no, I'm not of the world. I'm not of that kind of thing. Because you are not joining them, that's why they are going to persecute you. You are working in a place and they are conspiring. And they conspire together. We're going to do evil. We're going to destroy this corporation. And we're going to tear everything down. And they say, come on, we're meeting at, we're meet, a meeting of conspiracy. And say, no, I'm a Christian. I'm not supposed to throw down or to destroy and to build up because you are not joining them they will persecute you and then the lord is saying when it comes know the reason why you're suffering persecution and take your stand and your will stand i said your will stand and you know there are people they chicken out they don't have any backbone and when evil doers persecute them and the only reason they're persecuting is because you don't want to do evil with them when you when you commit the evil with them they are happy with you then you're of the world you're not of christ but when you remember i am of christ i'm not going to do the things they did come out from among them i mean you say persist the lord when the persecution comes that persecution you rejoice in that persecution i thought you'll say good amen, amen. Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 10. It says, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. If you know anything about a Christian, a Christian is somebody who takes an uncompromising stand against sin. That's righteousness. And when you're persecuted for righteousness' sake, all they're saying is, hey don't do that again don't stand for righteousness compromise beg yield surrender surrender your soul surrender the doctrine surrender the righteousness and then when you take your stand they'll persecute you when it comes you will stand it says blessed are they which are persecuted for what sake for righteousness for theirs is the kingdom of heaven blessed are ye when men shall revile you persecute you and shall see all manner of evil against you